you know, folks, it's it's the end of August, and it's still typically in the 80s, even here in Maine, but I guess it's already sweater weather time. Hey there, I am the Mighty Plantain. Thanks for checking out this video. We are, of course, looking at Sam Adams Sweater Weather Variety Pack. Honestly, one of my favorite variety packs out there. I always look forward to the fall beers, especially from Sam Adams. Um, this one's kind of a double-edged sword this time, though. On the one hand, I'm, I'm happy to see that we've got some decent beers for the most part. Part. I'm not a big fan of the Chaco. Anyway, um, on the other hand, there's nothing new in here. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's comforting to know that nothing changes out of this pack this time around, but we've, we've sort of come to expect at least one new beer each season, folks, and I don't know. I mean, it, it must be difficult to innovate. I get that, um, despite the fact that you guys acquired one of the most creative and off-the-wall fucking breweries ever when you grab Dogfish Head up. Um, but hey, whatever. I, I'm going to try not to harp on that too much because you know what? At least we finally got the Sam 76 out of this. Um, <laughs> so I guess I can't complain too much. And honestly, like I said, with, that, with the exception of the Jacko, I did really enjoy these beers last year. And I think maybe the Jacko, it might have been the fact that I was expecting a flat-out pumpkin beer, and I didn't realize that it was actually like a a, a reimagining or reformulation of the original Traveler uh, pumpkin shandy, and a shandy tends to have more flavors than pumpkin and, and beer in it. So anyway, um, we've got the Boston Lager, of course, Oktoberfest, Jacko, and Fest beer, which was new last year. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the Jacko done. We'll take care of that right off the bat. And then we're going to go into the Fest beer, then the Oktoberfest, and then the Boston Lager. And honestly, the Boston Lager is coming last because it has higher ABV than any of the others. And I'm going to try to mention this only once here because most of you guys already know this. But the higher ABV beers can kind of wreck your palate because the hoppy bitterness interferes with other flavors that you might pick up on. I don't think the Boston Lager is rugged enough to actually do that, but the fact of the matter is it is a hoppier than average beer, and it's going to be hoppier than the Oktoberfest and Jacko and, and Fest beer as well. I might be making a mistake by putting the Jacko ahead of the Fest beer, but mm, we're going to go ahead and do that anyway. Of course, I'll be cleansing with water in between each beer. I'm not going to subject you guys to having to watch me do that. But... Jacko up first. All right, now it does have a bit of a hazy, pumpkiny look to it with that dark brown bordering on orange color quite effervescent i got a decent pour on that one i don't remember if it was this bubbly last year but definitely very very bubbly today um but yeah that hazy orange tinted it just looks like a pumpkiny beer smells slightly of pumpkin and something else It has a nice earthy aroma to it. Maybe a mild tang on the end there, like a metallic tang almost. Mm. Nice medium to medium light. Yeah, we'll go medium, medium mouthfeel. And again, it's it's not quite sitting right with me. I'm getting like a decent mouthful of pumpkin flavor up front and some, some graininess, a nice maltiness to it. Um, but then something else kicks in, like a not quite a sour flavor, but a tangy flavor, I guess is the best way to put it. And... 
I just, I don't enjoy that bit. Like, like I said, the, the big mouthful up front. Great taste. But as soon as I swallow, it's like the, the pulpiness of the pumpkin. And then maybe, maybe there's some spices in there. Maybe it's like some pumpkin pie type spices and a hint of sweetness. Um, but then it fades to that weird tanginess that just doesn't work for me. Um, it's weird. I like pumpkin beers. I like shandies. I, I've actually had some pumpkin shandies from other breweries that really worked out well for me, but just Jacko doesn't work for me, I guess. I, anyway, I think I'd rather have a, a less sweet, non-tangy pumpkin beer like 20 pounds of pumpkin fat jack or the old harvest pumpkin ale my god that one was practically perfect for me anyway um i'm not gonna harp on it too much jacko for me sitting in a solid two and a half out of five now on a scale of one to five a two and a half is a flat average rating so the reason it's getting that is because i don't i don't particularly care for it but i don't hate it I don't, there's nothing about it I specifically dislike. Just the flavor isn't landing right for me, and it's just not not turning me on. So I'm gonna I'm gonna finish it. And I'm not gonna dump it. Um, that's kind of a deciding factor as well as you know whether or not I feel like finishing the beer. I'm gonna finish drinking it. And the other two in the pack are gonna get taken care of as well, but they're probably gonna be the last of the 12 that go. Um, so yeah, again, it's, it's not awful, it's just not right for me. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna finish up Jacko and we're gonna move on to the Fest Beer. Burp, whew, pardon, ignore that, edit it out. All right, next up is Fest Beer. I don't know. I feel like I should be pronouncing beer, beer, bear, bear, beer, bear, bear, beer, beer, differently when it's the B-I-E-R, fest beer, 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 fest beer. I don't know. I, I'll never get it right anyway, I'm sure. All right, so. 5.5% ABV, 22 IBUs, and this is considered a lager, actually. <laughs> because I forgot to do this for the Jacko, is considered a pumpkin ale, even though, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's a shandy more than anything. 4.4% ABV and 8 IBUs. So, technically, based on the IBUs, I'm moving in the right direction with the Fest beer being after Jacko, but uh, I might mess that up with Oktoberfest. All right. I'll say October 1st, and I'm going to get ahead of myself here. Boom. Ah, I did not get aggressive enough with that pour, but maybe I pulled it out at the end and got a decent head on it. Looks like it. It's all right. It's not great. It doesn't completely suck. Okay, something's going on with these guys. I don't remember the Fest beer being that bubbly either, but that is definitely a very effervescent beer. Whew, pardon. It's slightly hazy, slightly cloudy. Um, it does have a hint of an orange tinge, but it's overall a yellowish color. Let's say copper or bronze. Can you say bronze, maybe? Yeah. Let's go with that. All right, does have a really nice look to it. It's got a, an earthy aroma. Just smells like fall, like leaves and crisp dampness. Mm. Maybe a hint of smokiness. I'm just, when I smell this beer, the fall smell of it and the earthiness, it just makes me think of sitting around a campfire. But I get that with a lot of the fall beers, so. Mmm. Mmm. 
I think last year I characterized this as like a lighter version of the Sam Adams Oktoberfest. And that's what I'm getting here again. It's just, it's crisp and it's it's fall flavored. <laughs> that's the best way to put it. Um, again, it, it's evocative of, of wood smoke and leaves, damp, crisp leaves. Damp and crisp aren't the same thing when it comes to leaves, but it just has that that fall flavor. There's some different spices in there, I believe. Um, got a nice maltiness to it. Uh, it's got a decent medium mouthfeel. It's smooth and easy to drink. Um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. It's, it's earthy. It's a little grassy, a little woody, not too much of anything, just a really well put together fall beer. Um, I'm really liking this. I, I think I actually gave it a pretty decent rating last year, but today I'm giving it a four out of five. I'm really feeling it, despite the fact that it is still as warm as I said it was. I mean, my air conditioner would be kicking on if I hadn't turned it off prior to filming this video. Um, I didn't remember to turn it back on afterwards. It's going to get really freaking hot in here tomorrow. But even with that warm weather being out there, I'm still really digging the fall beer. So yeah, the fest beer is getting a 4 out of 5 from me today. I'm going to finish this one up. And then we're going to move on to the Oktoberfest. And here we are up to Oktoberfest. Ooh, pardon. Now, this is one of the reasons why the Sam Adams Fall Variety Pack, or Sweater Weather, as we've seen it called the last couple of years, is honestly one of my favorites of all time. Um, in addition to just liking fall beers, Oktoberfest style, and in general, Sam Adams Oktoberfest, no surprise to any of you who have seen any of these videos before. Oktoberfest is one of my favorites, and Boston Lager is one of my favorites. So, again, you've watched these videos before. There's no surprises in these next two beers, but we're going to go through them anyway. Alright, Oktoberfest is a lager, of course, at 5.3% ABV and 16 IBUs. Huh! So it's at 16. The Fest beer is at 22. That's interesting. Uh, again, at these lower levels, you're not going to notice a huge, huge overlap or, or difference. And they're definitely not palate wreckers, but just interesting. All right, so that definitely has a darker orange-brown color to it. Almost like an amber or rust color. Still quite effervescent. Lots of bubbles there. So again, I'm not sure what's going on with this particular pack. I don't remember these being as bubbly in the past, but maybe I'm just getting lucky tonight. Again, that same just general aroma of fall. Like crisp autumn leaves. Maybe a little bit of smoke, some wood, maybe a hint of earthy dankness. Mm. Nice medium, let's say medium heavy mouthfeel. Mm. And again, I just gotta say, it's almost like a heavier darker, more intense version of the Fest beer. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe a, other people are getting different impressions from these, but the Fest beer seems like Sam Adams Oktoberfest light, which might be a good thing for people who like a less intense version of this beer. For me, they're both decent, but I prefer the Oktoberfest. Fest beer is kind of like an appetizer before you get into the this seriously perfect, well-rounded fall beer. 
which is the Oktoberfest. And that leads me to the rating. It's always a 5 out of 5 for me. Unless, of course, someday they decide to reformulate it, which they've done with the summer ale. And there are rumors they're going to do it to the same Boston lager. I hope that never happens, even though they're, they're saying it'll just be a different way of brewing it, a different method, which won't change the flavor at all. I'm skeptical, because just with my limited knowledge of home brewing, I, the, the method can change the overall product drastically, whether you realize it or not, whether it says it will on paper or not. Anyway. Oktoberfest. Perfect 5 out of 5. Just the right combination of heaviness without being too heavy. Um, campfire appeal, I'll just say that. And just this perfectly rounded fall beer. It tastes like fall. And I, I know I kind of complained in the beginning about fall beer showing up before August is even over. Eh, you know what? It's, it's a trade-off. I don't want to admit that summer's coming to a close. I don't want anybody to rush me into fall. But fall beers showing up earlier means I can still enjoy them even in the warm weather. And some of them are great even in warm weather. Anyway, St. Adams Oktoberfest. I'm going to finish this up, obviously, quite quickly. <laughs> and then we'll move on to the Boston Locker. Um, yeah, that lasted about two seconds after I hit pause on the recording. <sighs> so, quick cleanse with water, and now we are on to the last beer in this pack. Again, no surprises here. Sam Adams Boston Lager. <laughs> Whew, pardon. 5.0% ABV and 30 IBUs. <laughs> Whew, excuse me. Frickin' Oktoberfest is coming back up. But even the burps are delicious, so that's not a problem. Look at that. Clear, not hazy, because not all delicious beers need to be hazy, despite what these current, current, uh, what the uh, new IPA drinkers would have you fucking believe. You don't need to be hazy to be a good IPA, and you don't need to be hazy to be a good beer. Golden, brown, color, Plenty of bubbles. Again, more effervescent than I'm used to seeing from a Boston lager, but just look at that fucking color. <sighs> Sorry, folks, I'm kind of in love here. Um, again, shouldn't be a surprise. <sighs> slightly sweet, malty, and slightly hoppy overall aroma. Just smells like the perfect beer. And a nice medium mouthfeel of the perfect beer. It's it's a perfectly rounded beer, folks. It's got this slightly sweet yet distinctively malty character. It's smooth, it's crisp, it's easy to drink, and it has this bit of hoppy bitterness to it that comes through just as you swallow and clean into the finish without being overwhelming. There's no particular hop notes coming forward, no like citrus, pine, earth, or grass, or anything like that, or dankness. It's just an overall hoppy bitterness with a non-distinct hop flavor, which just makes it perfect. Mm. There's nothing about this beer that jumps forward and makes me say, wow, that blank 
flavor is amazing. It's just the fact that you get everything you should from a beer all at once. Five out of five. Sam Adams Boston Lager. Amazing beer. One of the first non non mass produced domestic. I mean it's kind of mass produced and domestic now, but I don't know. Is Sam Adams still craft? I say yes. They're a lot bigger than they started out, and they're a lot bigger than a lot of breweries that we consider to be craft, but I, I'd say given its independence and the fact that they're actually acquiring other breweries too, yet letting them remain independent, um, I would say Sam Adams is still craft beer. So anyway, Sam Adams Boston Lager, one of the first craft beers I ever had. Thank you, EM Destroyer, for making me fucking try it. Opened my eyes to the fact that there are better beers out there than Bud Light, Coors Light, Miller Light, and the non-light versions of those same beers. Anyway, um, that's about all I got to say. It's a very solid pack. Again, the Jacko, I don't hate it. Not a big fan. <laughs> but the other three more than make up for the fact that it's in here. Uh, I would like to see it replaced next year by a, a more solid pumpkin pumpkin beer. Pardon. But, uh, you know, I'm willing to accept it in this pack because it does, it does kind of fit. And, um, yeah, two five out of five is a four out of five and a two and a half out of five. It's a really good next pack anyway that, that's just what i have to say about it hit me up down below in the comments or the email link love to hear what you have to say about these beers while you're down there don't forget to like and share the video make sure to subscribe to the channel until next time folks thanks for tuning in cheers mm.